On this episode of Fallout Fans, we break down and review episode one of the live action Fallout TV show. Buckle up everybody, we're headed into the wasteland. Welcome to Fallout Fans, a limited series podcast where we discuss all things Fallout, including the live action Fallout TV series. Watch all eight episodes of the first season of Fallout available exclusively on Amazon Prime Video, and then join us as we break down and review each episode. Fallout Fans is brought to you by Megadads. Find us on megadads.org or megadads on YouTube. Please consider subscribing if you'd like what you hear. We've taken great care to create an interesting video version of the show. The audio version of the show is available wherever you get your podcasts by searching for Megadads. We use a special methodology to help us break down and review episodes. We're going to talk about the best moments of the episode, the visual standout performances, discuss how the show might stand up to the fan scrutiny out there, talk about what we hated, and cap things off with a five-star review. This is your spoiler warning. Watch the show for yourself and then come back here and join us. Please leave a comment and let us know what you think. Feel free to leave your own five-star rating of this episode in the comments section. Today I'm joined by podcast veteran and my BFF, Clay T. Howard. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? We podcast a lot and we talk about things uh, that we love, like, you know, gaming, etc. But I think we're at our best when we talk about things that we're really passionate about. And I think this this has us both excited. So I'm excited that I'm excited and that you're excited. That's how I'm feeling. How about you? You good? Yeah, I'm great. I'm excited. Uh, I'm I'm loving the show and I'm excited to talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, I do want to dive in a little bit into our pedigree our experience with the fallout franchise well in other episodes we'll talk about you know other experience and things about us really quickly but for me fallout is a beloved franchise i started with the i would say the more mainstream games in that i didn't play fallout one or two started with three didn't play tactics or anything like that and then new vegas fallout 4 fallout 76 to mixed mixed effect um but i have played a lot of what i would consider like the bigger games and i love it uh when you people ask do you are you a skyrim person or are you a fallout person i've been thinking about this a lot lately and i think i've always skewed more toward the the alternate history far future fallout um so interestingly enough how about you What's your experience with, with Fallout franchise? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty similar to you. Um, most of my uh, gameplay uh, history kind of falls in line with the Bethesda uh, Fallout games. I haven't played the older uh, PC ones uh, that came out back in the day. Um, other than that, um, yeah, I, I think I've always been a Fallout guy too. I, there's something about it. Um, obviously I love the Elder Scroll games. We both do, but, uh, there's just something about the, the feel and the style of, of Fallout that is just so unique. And I've always been a huge fan of it and probably always will be. So, um, but yeah, I think that's it. I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause I did have two more bits. I wanted to ask you what makes a Fallout game a fallout game like what's what's the mix of elements that you think of when you think of the the franchise when you think of the game series yeah so i think it's it's a mixture of things uh i think it's uh a lot of the music i think it's the the time period this this dystopian uh future but it's also in the past it's stuck in like the 50s or whatever and so a lot of the music a lot of the art style is all kind of got that going on um but then it's also really bloody and gory and gruesome and horrible all kind of mixed in one um i think it's just a mixture of those things where it's this post-apocalyptic thing but it's got a really pretty 
kind of innocent side to it as well, but ultimately it's all kind of just screwed up. So <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. I, uh, I think it's about like these themes of survival and choice and everything that you mentioned, obviously, but it's also about like the strength for me really lies in the, the oddities and like, okay, this is an alternate history. Here's what technology is out there now. Here's how people react when everything goes to hell and it's, you know, the end and like, what are the motivations of the different groups of people who survive? And the reason I brought that up is the more I thought about it, I'm like, okay, what's going to make a good Fallout TV show is the list of things that are important is super long. And the list of things that could that you could get right or wrong and or ignore completely and it's there was just so much and i think that they put a lot of care into each of the things that we're talking about i mean it's already hard to adapt a gaming thing to a different format like television and this episode format but it, it worked out pretty good we'll talk about it let's get into it Again, we'll go into our special breakdown, starting with our first segment, Strength. Let's talk about the best scene or moment of episode one for us. I have mine. I have two. I have backups for most of these things, just in case you say the one that I pick. So let's start with you. Episode one, Fallout TV show, here we are. What stuck out to you the most? Yeah, I mean, I think the best scene, in my opinion, by far, is the opening scene. Uh, I think that sets up the whole show, and I think that uh, they nailed it. Uh, it gives me strong vibes from Fallout 4, uh, how they just kind of have a little pre, pre the bombs dropping scene that you get to see. Um, um, there's a lot in there that I'm sure is going to play into that character uh, later on that we they haven't fully uncovered, at least in the first two episodes. Uh, but yeah, just what a great scene. Uh, I've, I've watched both episodes, the first and the second one, twice now. Uh, once alone and once with my wife. And it got, we got through that first scene today, and she just looked over at me and she goes, wow. And I was like, yeah. Like, it's, it's intense. Like, isn't that? It was just so good. I loved it. Yeah, I agree. That was that was one of my two choices for sure. When the show started, again, I watched it with my wife at first. She was a sport and, you know, knows that I love Fallout, has rarely seen me play it, but doesn't have her own experience playing with it or playing it or anything. So she doesn't like violence. So her, I asked for her little review uh, just in like one sentence and she basically just said i almost threw up four times so we'll probably touch on that later as far as like the violence aspect of it but when she sat down to watch it when it started i was i was hoping like deep down that the fallout 4 intro which gives that like here's the world before and the the moment that the bomb drops because actually historically in the games you would enter the wasteland at different points like even the far future after the fall and and things like that but your fallout 4 gave this really cool emotional look at kind of like the moment uh, that everything goes down and then people escaping into the vault and i like this is me almost tearing up watching when things kind of go slow-mo and they're just rushing to escape um w walter goggins like face as he sees like like it dawns on him like once and then twice and then like three levels of realization, which is I, I thought was great, great acting. But he he really like made me care. And then, you know, you have his daughter there and it's just like it, it was wild. The strongest scene for me, though, my my number one was the scene right after that, which was the introduction to the vault dwellers and showing the vault. And they have like a, um, a montage just right in the beginning <laughs> where she's talking about uh, her life in the vault and what she does and what her day to day is like. And I loved it. Right away, I'm seeing all these little callbacks 
to the show and like the 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 feel of the world just demonstrated and just like a upbeat bubbly like but very odd which again is one of my favorite things about fallout like take and that stole the show for me by the end of that sequence i was just had a huge smile on and i was just so happy i'm like they nailed the vault you have to nail how <laughs> this is gonna look how this is gonna feel how the people are like she's doughy eyed and and like doesn't only knows her world and that's how it would be that's how it is depicted in games and i think they nailed it um so yeah. again i agree with you it, it it starts very well um did you have any other thoughts about either of those scenes or maybe one that you that deserves to be talked about as like maybe would have stole your number two slot or uh not that i can think of i think i think that was well put I, I agree with you i think if i had to pick another one i would agree i'd pick that too i think they did a good job they didn't rush too quickly through the vault part which i was worried about like i felt like they spent an appropriate amount of time in there and i appreciated that so we'll talk about that i'm glad you mentioned it perception we want to talk about the interesting or standout visuals of the show how things are going to look is incredibly important in the show um, when you're translating this very unique feel of the games to the t TV show space, you know, the budgets and the, you know, set design and the, the, the weapons, the clothing, the everything like it's, they have a lot to think about when you're adapting the game. So interesting or standout visuals, I'll go first on this. And I think, I think that this is what got most people's attention in the promos leading up for the show. And that was um, when you have the Brotherhood of Steel and the different suits and them trying to nail like the weight of mm. the suits and like how shiny are they going to be? Are they going to be able to uh, kind of translate that these things are powerful, but also a little bulky, kind of like a, you're a moving tank? Um, very powerful, but also kind of clumsy. And are they going to be BA? Like, is it a badass situation here where these guys are elites? And I think they nailed it for the most part. There was some, there was just a little bit where I was like, okay, this looks good when you have the, uh, Brotherhood of Steel members c coming off of the vertebrae and they're like coming toward you and walking. That's awesome and it looked good. And then later on, there's a scene you know where you get a mu you know much closer view, and I just feel like it was a little. It was just something was slightly off about it, and I couldn't stop myself from being slightly disappointed with it. And again, that just could be me. Um, my runner up would be again just going back to the vaults and like the colors and the color palette of the vault. You see the blue and the yellow like of the the jumpsuits and just like in the posters and everything how things are colored when you go back and you say, "Oh, this was the furniture they had." You know, it had that like alternate 1960 like color scheme of like the kitchen and stuff. I'm like, "Wow, the attention to detail was was insane." Um Visually for you, what did you think? Were you happy? Were you sad about it? Did they nail it or not? Yeah, overall, I was happy with it. I mean, you could tell that they definitely are relying a lot on CG and not really lying as heavily on practical effects, at least from what I could tell. Um, mm -hmm. Not that there isn't some, but just, you know. Um, I agree with you about the, the power armor. Uh, it's a difficult one. You can kind of tell that they're just big, bulky, uh, like weightless, like... I don't know what they made those costumes out of, but you know, they're not made of like heavy metal or whatever. And so it's difficult to make something that big look like it's actually heavy, you know, cause the, in theory, the robotics and the, the power is what's helping that costume move around with so much weight on it. But when you watch them walking across the, the flight lines, you can kind of see, it's just like, it all just kind of jiggles a little bit too oddly. Like <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Heavy stuff doesn't jiggle like that. And so, I mean, they're doing the best with what they have that the tech doesn't exist. So it's just like, how, how do you make that work? I think they did some good things with like, uh, with sound effects, like when they're interrogating the guy, 
um and i don't know what if that's the second episode or not every time the the mech moves around i call it a mech the the power armor is moving around it, it makes these big loud thuds and so yeah. it kind of like tricks your brain into thinking that it's this really big heavy piece of machinery so they i think they did the best with what they have but i i see what you're saying and i, I mostly agree with what you're saying uh for I, yeah, me for me, uh, I think the best looking uh, standout visuals of this episode, once again, hitting back on the on the very opening scene uh, with the nukes dropping far off in the distance just looked really good and uh, just mm. really impactful. And there's something to me about seeing something large off in the distance, some big epic thing happening. It, it always just like, I don't know, I, it always like makes my jaw drop. And so uh, not only did they drop one nuke, but then like as the guy's riding away on his horse there's like three more nukes that go off and the very last one is like right next to him and it's just like whoa like it's just crazy dude mm -hmm. and I, and i thought they did a really good job making that look good because if, if you didn't do a good job with those nukes I, I, you know it's hard to come back from that and so i think they they pulled it off really well yeah i agree very impactful moment and it looked scary you know it looked like whoa this is like happening um and going back to the power armor and how it sounded in the interrogation scene where we have Maximus, you know, the squire just being interrogated, th that audio was so good. It was above my expectations. I was like, this is how that would sound as I'm watching it. And then, it, and it elevated the whole scene. And whereas what you're talking about with the power armor, like that jiggle, there's something, I can't think of it right now, but in pop culture, in some other movie or show where there's a similar like suit thing that's moving. And you're right, that jiggle is there and it's present here. And it's probably inevitable. They did, you know, a, a really decent job. I don't want to take away from, it shouldn't even have looked that good. Like I, I it was, it was good. And I just wanted it to be a little bit better, like almost to the level of that audio, which is like better than expected, like blowing me away. But not everything's gonna be like that. They, they just it's it wasn't perfect, but it was it was it was really good. Um, moving on, endurance. Can the Fallout TV show endure the hard to please fans and fanatics of the series? In this segment, we just want to talk about what reception's been like. For this, again, I'll, we'll tackle it a couple different ways, but I went to Reddit and looked at a bunch of fan like reactions to the series and tried to nail it down just to like episode one and what people thought of that. And I got this uh, comment off Reddit. This is the most bug-free, no mods needed experience I've ever had with Fallout. <laughs> which I thought was incredibly funny. And then another one said, quote, after 10 years of cousin stuff, unquote, <laughs> I'm definitely excited for the real thing. <laughs> so they're like, holy shit. So these are the top two upvoted comments that I could find when browsing around Reddit for like fan reactions. So long story short, it has been positive. And I think that also kind of, especially that second quote kind of it it really emphasizes how the wackiness and like fun aspect of fallout like the the writing the way that they just they have drama going on right the bombs are falling and then they have the uh action which is very important obviously and then they just so happen to like hey let's not forget that this is weird. This is odd. Like these people have been stuck underground with each other and it's interwoven into the story where it's like these different populations must co-mingle because they're all cousins and they, you know, they do, they had to do cousin stuff. So they have to swap people. I thought that was a hilarious part of the show. <laughs> and they mentioned mm -hmm. it a couple times. Like, uh, <laughs> she's about to, uh, go get married or, you know, go meet her husband-to-be. And the guy's like, oh, I can't open the door to let you see your new husband. And then she's like, oh, yeah, you're my cousin, and, like, I know you love me and stuff, but it's not sustainable in the long term. And, like, I thought it was it, it was wild. So fans are pleased as far as I can see. Wh what do you think? Do you, what have you heard about what people think out there? Do you think that uh, since fans can be so passionate that this will uh, 
satiate them. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, there's certain people you'll never please, and there's going to be diehards out there that are just never going to be happy. Uh, I saw one article about some some part, and I, I'm assuming we haven't got there yet. Um, yeah, I think it's episode the, six is where things start hitting the fan for some people. Right. Especially. There's some contradictions to the games that show up in the show. And so I purposely didn't look at that because don't want to be spoiling anything. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, other than that, though, everything I've read has been very positive and which I'm very happy about. Um, I will say, like, I I just wanted this show to be successful. And so I was probably going to go in with with uh, low expectations, um, just wanting to enjoy it and probably leaving any preconceived notions I have at the door and just try to appreciate it for what it is. But uh, so far I haven't really even had to do any of that. Like it's just, I feel like it's delivering and I hope it continues to do well and people continue to love it and that it will, you know, keep going. They keep making more of it. So agreed. Yeah. I, there was a surprising lack of like, like, like the expectations I tried not to get them up, but then I was like trying to rack my head, like what wasn't done well? And we'll talk about that in a bit, but it was, you know, very little, very little charisma. We want to talk about any standout acting or performances in episode one. Clay, what stood out to you? What was like the best uh, uh, for you as far as acting in the show so far? So I'm a huge Walton Goggins fan. Mm -hmm. I have been for a long time. Uh, Ever since I heard that he was going to be on this show, I was so excited. Um, If I don't branch out from him, though, I will literally pick him for every episode. And so I'm not going to pick him. Uh, I'm going to give this episode, in my opinion, the standout performance uh, to be the overseer, Hank McLean, played by Mm -hmm. Kyle McLaughlin, I think is how you say his name. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I just thought he did a really good job. Uh, I thought that he he played a very uh, lovable father, a good good leader, and... um, I just thought that he played the part really well. He wasn't in a lot of it, and now he's he's gone. We don't know if we'll ever see him again, uh, but I thought that he, he played the part good, and uh, his little delivery about to her at the very end of the episode through the window, you're my life or you're my world or whatever. Like It was just the really good delivery and really kind of a, a good heartfelt moment. And so, uh, yeah, I picked him. Good call on that scene. You are my world. Like it could have been very cheesy and it really did need to bring up the stakes, you know, in that moment. And I, and I did feel connected uh, with, I cared about that relationship between the father daughter and, you know, it's supposed to be a, like a crux to like everything going forward about, um, you know, them being separated. So interesting, interesting. And, I gave my props to, you know, Walter Goggins in the very first scene where his eyes just see the incoming devastation of the the bombs being dropped and, you know, totally deserved. I'm a little worried about what he's going to be able to do behind the prosthetics or whatever they have going on when he gets into uh, his ghoul form. Because at, traditionally, if you have something you know, around your face, um, like the, we see this in like Star Trek and things like that. If if you have things on your face and you're taking away some like emotions or the ways that you can emote, it can be a little difficult. Um, you have to do a lot with the eyes. Um, can you move? And <laughs> he doesn't have eyebrows anymore. So it's like, it, it's, it's odd. Um, and I worry about that a little bit. But so far, you know, he's done a, a really decent job in episode one. I was going to give best actor to Ella Purnell, who plays Lucy McLean, um, the vault dweller, because she's just so bubbly. And like, I immediately liked her. I loved every moment she was on screen and her like, like go getting attitude, you know, even d- despite like things not going well. I just thought. I really liked it and it worked. I believe that she is that person. So I think that means a lot. But surprisingly, I I think Aaron Moten, who plays uh, Maximus, um, the squire of the Brotherhood of Steel, or he, in the interrogation scene, he stole it from me because I believe that he was scared that, you know, they're trying to pin this uh, 
moment on him where, you know, did he injure someone in order to get the promotion? It's like, I felt like his life was on the line. I felt like he was in fear and it really did it for me. And then when he's angry and he's upset when initially he thinks he's going to be passed over and he's going to be shoveling shit for the rest of his life, he's like slamming down and just like very like dejected. And I believe that too. And I was super surprised because I didn't like him initially. Like right away, I'm like, eh, you know, not impressed. And it turned it around really quickly for me, actually. So, yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Maximus. Any yeah, thoughts? that's that's a fair thought. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of his character just yet. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it, I'm curious to see where they take Maximus because... I wasn't. I just wasn't really liking it, and and it, more of episode two. Some of the choices and things they have him do. It's just like, it's it's very different, and so I'm really curious to see what the plan is with him. I I think uh, the main the main girl uh, Lucy. I think I, you can kind of see what they have planned. I think they got a good direction going, but Maximus is just like I, I just don't really like the character in episode one, and so. I'm surprised you picked him, but then when I think about his performance in that scene, I can't disagree with you. Like, I think he played it really well. Um, so despite the fact that I'm not a huge fan of the character at this point, you can't argue that the performance wasn't great. So uh, yeah. I agree. I think it's a good call. A- episode two, you know, is going to be, you know, a huge one for Maximus. So we are watching these, like we have to like get ahead so we can prepare for future shows but we really try to like kind of cone in what we're thinking about, you know, episode per episode. Um, But yeah, Maximus has like the, that character arc is going to be interesting as we go forward for sure. Um, So yeah, good, good acting overall though. I thought people are nailing it, whatever tone they're going for. I I don't want to like spend too much time trying to describe it. They're nailing what they're going for is, is what I got. I think mm-hmm. everybody's on the same page. Uh, did you have something at? Nope. Intelligence. We want to talk about high intelligence, but most importantly, low intelligence. What's the dumbest or worst moment of the episode? Something that maybe brought the experience down for you a bit. What were they thinking? Clay, I'll go ahead and let you take first crack at this. Now's your okay. time. We've been raving about it, but what what was a miss for you? Uh, I felt like episode two had a lot more of these than episode one did, so I had to like look a little deeper on this one because there wasn't mm-hmm. really any moments where I was like, Ugh, what was that or what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, uh, I guess it wasn't necessarily dumb or like terrible. It was just a little confusing, and maybe you have some thoughts. There's the scene, which I've already referenced, where the father has to decide, the overseer has to decide. The, the, the bad lady says, you got to decide. It's either your daughter or, or these people. And he has to decide. But then it just kind of ends with him getting tranquilized and carried away. And then she sets the bomb off. But then the people kind of like run away back into the vault. And it's just like, what What was that? Did, who did he pick? Did he pick the people? Because I feel like he picked both of them. And took it, they took him. And the bomb, what was the point of the bomb? Like I thought that was going to blow a hole to like open the vault but it just kind of blew up like i don't know it just didn't really all come together the way it should i think she should have either killed those people because he was supposed to pick between his daughter and those people so when he put them in there i guess she just the bad guy just kind of spared them is what i i guess she like didn't didn't finish them off after all even though she could have i I don't know. That that wasn't the only part of the episode that I felt like was a little confusing and didn't necessarily hit hit right. Yeah. No, that was my top. I after watching the first episode with my wife, uh, she's like, "So what did you think?" I in discussing, you know, oh, I was I liked it. I couldn't put that away either. It was one of the first things that I had to bring up. I was like, "Why did like they explain like kind of 
oh, this is about choice. Like, oh, well, as you know, like people got to choose, which is part of the games. It's like, what are you going to do? Uh, what's the lesser of two evils in this situation? Are you going to save this person or, you know, kill them? Like that is like a thing in games. So I was like, oh, wow, this is great. She's like putting it straight out there. Let me like up the stakes. Let me give this person a choice. I'm like, this is a, a great way to like translate like that whole theme into the show. And then there were no stakes at all. It was supposed to be this high tense moment. I was like, something's happening. Someone's going to die. And it turns out that the people who he, they had to choose, he had to choose between, nobody actually gets killed. And again, just like you're saying, what was the point of the bomb? Like, was it that they couldn't chase after them quickly? Was it that they wouldn't be able to get back into that one particular series of tunnels that connected them to the other vaults? Um, which is interesting because in other games, I don't think we've seen much of like one vault connected to another numbered vault, Correct. um, for the purposes of like swapping people and sharing resources, etc. Uh, but that's a whole other thing, but I agree with you. Definitely a confusing moment. Somebody should have died. I mean, unless all those people are important like yeah, for, and for later, you know, I, I don't Part understand. of me wonders if, like, it's going to play. Maybe it'll show up later and, you know, yeah. the dad wakes sure. up and he goes, you killed those people. And then she'll be like, actually, I didn't kill those people. I don't know. It, Yeah, you're right. Because they take him and he wouldn't know that they weren't. I don't know. It it, it threw me off. And in a, in, a, in a show where, like, one of the parts of watching a TV show is looking for inconsistencies and did that make sense the why behind things that was a fault uh, my top moment was at the end when they're introducing the ghoul which you know we have Cooper who was you know the down on his luck actor apparently we see him show up later in a post irradiated form you know, still alive after all these years. How? In gaming, we know that the idea of ghouls, um, people can live for a long time after being, you know, irradiated for for one, one reason or another. I'm sure there's in the games that I'm not thinking of, like the, the reasoning why, but he survives and survives for a long time. Now, the dumbest part for me is that he's buried and then they're, they're quickly ex trying to explain that somebody buried him for a reason that we don't know. They unearth him once a year to cut off parts of him or something, if I if I've heard right. Like, to yeah. like hurt him a little bit. But, lay so, why? Like, in, in a thing where it's a new, odd story you're trying to introduce new people to, my thought would be, keep it simple. Like, you're already trying to say this guy's alive after all this time. Like, give give a better explanation. Get into it a little bit so it's not completely ludicrous. Um, but they introduced a wrinkle in there that didn't have to be there. They're not going to explain. Like, I think he could have just showed up, you know, in a bar or whatever right there. And then they come up to him. Unless I'm missing something where, you know, this person who buried him... Like, he had to be buried for some reason or another. He has to have a vendetta with someone. He has to be off the grid for a while or for years, you know, and now he's getting back into it. And that's really important to the show. Um, because when he comes out, I don't know how many years he was buried. Like, he seems to have a lay of the land, so he's been in the wasteland for quite a while. Like, he's a new person and, and shaped by the world around him. Uh, we get into that more later, but I just thought that was like weird and not a good way to introduce that odd thing to new audiences. What'd you think about that? Yeah, yeah that's valid too. Um, yeah, I think my wife was kind of confused why he was buried too. And I was like, I was like, maybe ghouls can like regenerate limbs maybe they're like mm. farming him out but i think you're probably more right it's probably more like a torture thing than anything 
And so he's got, you know, some enemies or whatever. But I agree. It, it raised more questions than was necessary. I think they, like, wanted to have this cool moment where they raise this character out of a grave. And he's... Yeah, exactly. Kind of, like, they were going for that. And it, it just... You're right. Choice. It made it made it more confusing than it probably was necessary. So yeah, that's valid. I, I thought about what you're saying. Like, okay, we need to show that he was kind of, like, dead or, like, but but like he's coming back, so it's like let's have him come out of a of a grave and get dug up. Like is you know like he oh yeah he's been down there for a while, so we tell people that's why he's he's still here because it's been a while. Like I don't know, it was wild. Um, the other thing that I thought we could have done without really quick was <laughs> we have Lucy get into a fight with her uh, new husband. You know they get it on, which was you know great scene, and then they get into a fight very brutal and she just she just racks him with like a a glass pitcher like into the neck and then i thought you know it's one of the gorier moments and then later uh in this whole like uh vault being raided by by raiders scene very violent he comes back like with like his throat like open what did you think about this as far as uh as far as a thing about him coming back like serial killer style or like horror movie style i i, I thought it was me? like no it didn't bother me i, I thought it was like it my cool? wife was like whoa oh shoot like she He's was back. like like as soon as it showed his face she was like oh like I, so i think it was kind of a like grotesque shocking moment that worked pretty well mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yep sounds good um we don't want to leave anything behind so next Agility, agility, you gotta move quick in the wasteland to survive. So what we wanna do is quickly run through the major story beats of the episode, uh, focus on the character arcs, and just make sure that we can give our little two cents of the things that worked for us or didn't work for us, anything else that we wanna add as we kind of wrap up discussion of the episode. So things begin uh, with Cooper, well, again, washed up actor who is down on his luck at a birthday party, kind of suffering in his uh, in his current status and having to eat shit of people who he's trying to perform for at birthdays. And then he's with his daughter, who he obviously cares for. And out of nowhere, the bombs fall. Everyone knows it's coming. It's like an eerie, <laughs> an eerie sense of there's war on the horizon and i'm surprised that he goes and tells her like she's like is this gonna happen he's like uh yeah basically it could like he like admits to her that like yeah the end of the world could totally be happening and like i'm like why are you saying that to the child but i guess he like was really like almost sure this was going down and it was just it was wild Uh, we talked about his great acting to kind of sell along with the visual the bombs that this was happening uh, feel free to stop me if you have anything to add about that opening scene, Clay. No, oh, you're good. Moving on, going straight into the vault. Vault 33, I think it is. Uh, we have Lucy and the gang who are been stuck underground for about 200 years. They're living their best life, or the best life that they can, making do with uh, sex stuff with their cousins because... There's not too many people here you're not related to in in the vaults after that many years of interbreeding. Very interesting, very quirky. Again, we talked about them nailing the visuals. Uh, They had the little wedding scene. They have some hot sex. They have some hot sex in there. Um, She goes for it, and then they get into a fight. We have the raiding scene, which is like crazy violent. Um, I thought it was a little weird how the raiders are in slow-mo, like chopping people up. You have like, you know, some gunshots and some some uh, slicing and dicing with, with different like uh, weapons. It looked a little fake at certain times and a little too CGI in certain times. That's all I'm going to say about that. It just, it was fine. It was good, but a little like, a little fake looking at moments. Uh, and I think there was kind of like, oh, this is goofy, like also violent and super goofy. Um, any thoughts on the raiding scene and when things go to shit under in the vault? Yeah, I thought they played up to that part really well. I think the tension built and the music was building, things were happening. Uh, so I thought that it, it played up really well. Um, 
a shout out to one part of the action scene where one of the raiders uh, shoots shoot or uh, sticks a gun, a machine gun in the dude's mouth, <laughs> puts it up against the wall, and then shoots through his head, and then turns around and shoots two other people through the dude's head while it's still standing. Um, and I think the line but right before that was, get that jelly mold out of here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just appreciated that they put that line in there because it's just like, that's a terrible line. But like they, they, they know they know that. They just they thought it was funny to put it in there. And so I kind of appreciated that. Absolutely. 100% for sure. Uh, what did you think about the choice of having Lucy, when she goes to the armory, she's going to start fighting back. That of all things, she ends up going for the syringe shooter um, that inca- incapacitates people. Um, yeah, I think it was definitely it was definitely a choice. Like they really wanted her to use that weapon for one reason or another. Um, what what did you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't as cool. Uh, obviously, it makes sense that the Raiders would take all the good stuff and leave mm-hmm. the crappy gun behind. So it could be more, no more than that. Maybe it's just them kind of playing off like she's kind of like she's a threat, but she's not like fully there yet. Like maybe as time goes, she will transfer from being this tranquilizer gun shooter to a full blown killer or maybe it's like a thing that they're just going to continue to maybe it's part of her not being a pacifist but uh, maybe violence isn't her like go to thing I, mm-hmm. I don't know but she literally like ripped a dude's juggler out with a like with a vase so I like it's not like she's not going to kill people she already has but it, it is interesting I think they did it for a reason but I'm not entirely sure what it is yeah, you mentioned the pacifist thing, and I think that because I was trying to pay attention to the scene, um, that I think she saw other guns and bullets, like very few, and then she did take the syringe shooter. Uh, there's a name for it, an, an official like name for it, I think, in the games that escapes me. But yeah, I think it was a pacifist thing where it's like I don't want to go out there and start like blasting people. I, I want this that's going to like take people out and incapacitate is what I'm thinking. Uh, another, the last little weird thing about this, the more I thought about it was they shouldn't have been able to like survive with that many people the way things were going, right? Like these raiders were there more violent, armed to the teeth. And then in the end, there are enough survivors to kind of still there were way more people alive at the end than i thought what did you think of that yeah i think if it was a video game they probably mostly all would be dead but um i think it works better for television if not everybody dies right off the bat Mm -hmm. especially since they already nuked the world in this episode so (laughs) i think they purposely wanted there to be a, a home to come back to um and so i think they chose not to kill off everybody for that reason so that eventually uh, in theory she could come home Mm, yep yep maximus is at what i believe is it looks like uh one of like the airfields that we see in many of the games uh from you know just like a little base right and they have like a barracks they have uh empty well not empty hangers but they have hangers they have uh, you know, landing pad area, latrines, and things like that. He's basically in the, the what you could describe as like a army situation, and he's a low rung, eating shit, shoveling shit, like a uh, bottom of the totem pole, and he just has a super hard life. I felt for him, and he is uh, in awe of the Brotherhood of Steel members, the knights who able are able to use power armor who get all the glory who are armed to the teeth in these uh, power armor suits and it turns out that his friend is up for a promotion but and we'll just do it now in a turn of events i think someone puts a blade at the bottom of the friend's boot and it chops off like half of the foot what do you know what happened here? Did that look like, how is that what happened, or do I have that completely wrong? 
It didn't chop the foot off. It just sliced her leg as it went down. The boot went down on her foot. And so it just put a huge gash in in her foot. And so it was just bleeding really bad. So that's all. But it was a a blade stuck in the boot, right? Correct. Somebody, yeah, somebody, somebody, yeah, rigged it up. Yep. Interesting. Uh, Later, Maximus is uh, questioned. Because they're like, they say you did it. While well, these other people who are beating your ass whenever they get a chance that, that really hate you for one reason or another. And they say you did it and the interrogation happens. And I, I think we could just talk about it here. I I didn't know for sure, for sure that he didn't do it. I think that they even want us to think that he may have done it even though the friend's like oh i told him you wouldn't hurt a fly but i think based on the shots you know how like oh is the camera on them where they could give like a side eye you're like oh did i kind of do it like what did you think about all that did maximus do it do we know are we supposed to question it yeah i don't yeah i don't know i don't think i think they purposely didn't make it absolute one way or the other and so you're supposed to kind of question if it happened or not Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. I don't know what to believe, which is why I yeah. said this character is so weird and just like it feels like he would be do he would do anything, but it also seems like that's his only friend. So you would think maybe he wouldn't go that far. Um, but I, I imagine for they they're not going to make a main character who does terrible stuff like that. But it's Fallout. Who knows? Hard to say. Yeah, it's. Um... Yeah, we won't get into it too much now, but that's a complex character, and that's not the last time that we look at the, like, good and evil lines get a little blurred. Like, who are these characters, what are their motivations, and what are they willing to do to survive is going to be a theme. Uh, Very interesting. Um, We have him, Maximus, get the job, so he goes through a ceremony where he's branded and he's on the... The power armor wielders these knights apparently need, you know, a sidekick guy to carry their shit around. So that's going to be him. And he's he has the job, so he's going to go out on a mission. And they say that they are in search of this uh, scientist who's escaped the Enclave. And they don't give any other, um, any other big details about that. But there's a mission. They're going to go do it. We have Walter Goggins, a.k.a. Cooper, a.k.a. The Ghoul get dug up by a band of criminals who uh, they're like oh this guy's badass we need him and they dig him up and he's not gonna play ball he's just gonna murder them and and go out on his own and he loves killing and he says he does it for fun uh he's into he's into it for the thrill of it all so he's unscrupulous uh which is interesting because he was a nice little daddy figure when he uh was first opening the show uh, so what's going to happen with the ghoul character, we don't know yet. And the show does end, um, every episode I believe is different with a little CGI rendering of like the wasteland, like zooming out and out and out, just showing different, like kind of a, kind of like a, a palette of like what you can expect from the world. They do this at the end of different uh, movies and sometimes it's just kind of a scene setter like this is some of the concept stuff we had this is some of the stuff we want you to see that's just visually cool and fits with the world which i think is really cool it happens at the end of uh, at least episode one and two so really good so that is a quick quick run through of episode one luck if we have any luck, what do we hope to see in future episodes? What are we banking on? Any uh, predictions that you can make now that you want to see? Uh, I'll go first on this one. I want to go back to the vaults. I want. I think that the vault setting and the stories that go along with the vaults are super interesting. And in the games, like what basically because people are isolated in their own little areas underground where they can escape the radiation above. Um, They go through different situations and vault tech, the company who built the vaults and put people down there. They have different like aims. Uh, They have different uh, situations going in. Not everybody is living it up down there uh, in peace. Uh, Sometimes it's a different situation. Sometimes we have the wrong people in charge. Sometimes there's just, other storylines in the games that are just super cool and i want to go back to the vaults 
if at all possible. Um, side note, I'd like to go inside the Brotherhood of Steel, like Citadel that they have that floats in the air. It's seen in episode one, but we don't go inside, which kind of surprised me, actually. Uh, I, yeah, I, I would say I don't really have any predictions. I was just super satisfied. How about you, Clay? Yeah, um, I think there's... I'm excited at what the possibilities of what's to come. Uh, I think there's some things that they've alluded to that uh, are going to play out. Uh, the the bad lady who takes uh, the main chick's father, uh, she looks over at her and says, "You look just like your mom did," mm -hmm. and so that's alluding to you know there, there's some history there, and so I think that's going to play out. Uh, the the evil lady, I can't remember the character's name. She also even Mulder, at one point, Mulder, Mulder, yeah, Mulder, it's a weird Mulder. last name, yeah. Mulder. She even says at one point do these people know who they are like because he goes i think i know who you are and she goes but do they know who they are and so oh. there's like some like there's some like hidden things that i think might circle around that have to do with with the vault tech stuff and so that they might lean into that a little more heavily too which could be really cool so um yeah i think i think there's some might be some fun stuff around the corner hopefully lee moldaver Moldover. They say it different. Mold, Moldover. Mold, yeah. Moldover. Anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I was hooked. Um, by the end of episode one, I was like, this is better than expected by far. <laughs> Let's wrap it up with our final rating TLDR. What did we think in a nutshell and our five star rating? I went back and forth on this because based on what I've seen, and what I usually do with a five star, I reserve my five star when I have zero notes, when it's just exceptional. It's like basically, you know, flawless. And there were some things in here that were, it, everything satisfied for the most part, except for what we talked about. And I wanna leave room in the scale to be a little nuanced with my like between average and high. So long story short, I give episode one a three and a half. I almost gave it a four, but a three and a half out of five rating. I think it was great, better than expected, but I, I see room and potential for it to be even better. What do you think, Clay? Wow, we're giving out halves, huh? Interesting. Halves. All right. Um, yeah, overall, I think this is a stellar first episode of a show. I think they did a great job setting it up. Um, I think the only pacing issue I see is I think the first two scenes are so good in this show. And then we get to the Brotherhood stuff, and it kind of slows down a little bit. And mm -hmm. the beginning of the Brotherhood stuff is a little, like, the the more I watched it, I was like, yeah, I, I just, I would love to skip this part and just move on. And so I, I think that hurt it a little bit, but then I think I love where they're going with it and I love what they do in episode two with it. But, uh, that part just brought it down a little bit, but at the end of the day, I think, I think it was just a solid first episode, an hour and 15 minutes, man. It was nice and long. It felt like we were watching a movie. I, I couldn't get enough of it. And so, um, Overall, I was just so happy with it, and I think they did a really good job of setting up the show and, and pulling people in. I've already got friends that I've been talking to who are watching this who've never played the game and are loving it. And so I think they're, I hope that it, it, it finishes as strong as it starts. I give it a four out of five. Whoa, nice. Excellent. Yeah, right about right about where I was going to do it. I was on the fence. I really was, but I, I, I'm, I'm glad I did what I did. Because as we talked about, like, we have to kind of be ahead a little bit to do this. So I did see episode two. So we'll talk about that next time on Fallout Fans, this mini podcast where we are talking all things Fallout, including and especially starting with the Fallout live action TV series. Thank you for joining us. Join us for further episodes. Subscribe. Don't forget, leave your five star rating and what you thought about episode one in the comments thank you so much for joining us clay thank you for watching thank you so much for being here you make everything fun and uh yeah we'll see you next time in the wasteland